This freakish creature appeared on a California beach and left scientists completely baffled. The staff at the Coal Oil Point Reserve in California can't miss it. A massive 600-pound creature has washed up from the Pacific Ocean. They move closer to the thing, thinking that they know what species they're looking at. Soon, though, they realize that they've gotten it all wrong. In reality, they don't know what this monstrous creature really is. Considering how large the animal on the beach appeared to be, the coal point experts quickly determined that they'd found an ocean sunfish, and the specs seemed right at first. After all, the ocean sunfish is one of the weightiest species of bony fish on Earth. Some can reach more than a whopping 2,200 pounds. The stunning ocean sunfish can be so large that its height can match its length. This is a stark contrast to the sleek slim fish we tend to imagine darting through rivers and oceans. The size and thickness of their skin keep adult sunfish safe from many oceanic predators. Having said that, though, sharks, orcas, and sea lions can eat them. It's not particularly surprising that a strange creature would wash up on the beach of the Coal Point Oil Reserve in Southern California. The area, protected by the University of California to aid in educational pursuits, is home to a slew of unique creatures. The land itself is notable, too, and it's one of the final illustrations of a coastal strand environment. Untouched dunes pile up along the coastline of the Coal Oil Point Reserve, playing host to unique plant life. The ecosystems which have developed in the dunes represent a delicate balance. Rare creatures, such as the dune beetle and the western snowy plover, make their homes in these sandy mounds. The Coal Oil Point Natural Reserve also encompasses the Devereux Slough, which presents as a tidal lagoon during the colder parts of the year. In the summertime, though, much of the moisture evaporates and the area becomes defined by salt flats and saline ponds. These changes create one-of-a-kind habitats for the creatures that end up here, as do the reserve's grasslands and its stretches covered in coastal scrub, a community of plants native to California. In total, the Coastal Point Reserve is known to host more than 1,000 different species of animals and plants, but experts believe that they have yet to reveal every single creature that dwells within the expanse of protected land. Although they have a comparatively safe habitat in the reserve, many of these species face habitat disintegration elsewhere, and that's just one of the many reasons why it's such a special expanse of land. Plus, the Coal Oil Point Reserve borders the Pacific Ocean, which means there are plenty of more noteworthy species swimming in the nearby depths. An intern who worked on the reserve happened upon one of those very animals in February 2019, but from far away, the creature would have looked like a massive gray blob. Jessica Nielsen, a conservation specialist, said in a UC Santa Barbara press release that the initial sight of the intern's discovery shocked her. The creature had strange features, unlike most other animals that appear on sandy coastlines. She said, this is certainly the most remarkable organism I've seen wash up on the beach in my four years at the reserve. Evolutionary biologist Thomas Turner felt the same way when he saw the gigantic creature in the sand. First, he caught a glimpse of it in images that Nielsen uploaded on the Coal Oil Point Reserve's Facebook account. Then, he raced to the shoreline with his wife and child so that he could see the animal for himself. Turner told CNN, It's the most unusual fish you've ever seen. It has no tail. All of its teeth are fused, so it doesn't have any teeth. It's just got this big round opening for a mouth. On top of that, it was enormous. In fact, six foot tall, Turner stood with his arms outstretched to show just how big the creature was. The fish was nearly seven feet long, and it weighed more than 600 pounds. As such, the Coal Oil Point Reserve Team classified the creature as an ocean sunfish, otherwise known as a common mola. They posted photos to a website called iNaturalist, where other experts could weigh in. 
At first, the commentators also suspected that the California-based team had found an ocean sunfish, too. Luckily, someone looped fish scientist Ralph Foster into the conversation, too. From there, the South Australian Museum's fish expert took a good hard look at the photos of the supposed ocean sunfish. And, as he examined the creature, he suspected that those classifying it as such had gotten it all wrong. With this idea in mind, Turner knew who he could turn to in search of answers. So he fired off an email containing some images of the beached creature to a woman named Marianne Nygaard, a scientist who focuses on marine science. Nygaard was the perfect person to consult. The images initially did little to move Nygaard, though. She recalled to CNN the pictures weren't very clear. I was reluctant to settle on an identification because it was so far out of range. So she and Foster reached out to the Coal Oil Point Reserve Team. If they could send better photos, then the duo could be in a better position to draw conclusions. Nielsen and Turner heeded Nygaard and Foster's call. The California-based pair returned to the shoreline to snap more photos of the perplexing creature. But by then, it had been a couple of days since the intern had spotted the blob on the sand. And in that time, the tides had washed it away. Still, Nielsen and Turner held out hope that they could track down the supposed ocean sunfish once more. So they separated, starting a couple of miles apart, then walking toward one another. And thankfully, their plan worked. Not far from the fish's original resting place, they rediscovered its body. Waves had moved the fish, but Turner and Nielsen could still examine it and send more detailed photos to Nygaard and Foster. In the meantime, the coal oil point duo took a closer look at it. Soon it became clear that the creature had a few features that proved its original classification had been wrong. Where normal fish have tails, the ocean sunfish has what's known as a clavis. In place of a thin, long tail, these sunfish instead have a rounded tail that's sometimes as wide as the fish's entire body. As such, it acts more like a rudder than like a powerful back fin. The fish on the California beach had a clavis, but the shape of it didn't match that of other ocean sunfish. Snapping pictures of the unique fish delighted Nielsen, and she explained as much to The Current, the University of California Santa Barbara's news site. The conservation specialist said in February 2019, it was really exciting to collect the photos and samples, knowing that it could potentially be such an extraordinary sighting. As it turned out, Nielsen hadn't let her excitement build up in vain. Nygaard knew as soon as she saw the clearer pictures that the California-based scientists had found something completely spectacular on their beach. As she put it, I couldn't believe it. I nearly fell out of my chair. Nygaard recognized that the sunfish was not of the common variety, but was rather something known as a hoodwinker sunfish. And she was ultimately the right person to note the subtle differences between the two. After all, the marine scientist had discovered and named the hoodwinker species in 2017 after years of trying to find it. Scientists have long known about the existence of sunfish. It has, however, taken centuries for them to conclude that quite so many different varieties of the giant fish exist. In 1758, the ocean sunfish was discovered first. As it turns out, this is the most prevalent of all the sunfish species. Later, evidence started to emerge of a mysterious type of sunfish, what would later turn out to be the hoodwinker, living around Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, or Chile. In other words, places that were all in the Southern Hemisphere. However, a record from the turn of the 19th century also depicted one of the massive hoodwinkers in Dutch waters. So Nygaard had plenty of places to look when she decided to try and find this yet-to-be-classified variety of sunfish. While Nygaard researched the mystery fish, she realized that a lot of sunfish sightings had been misclassified. Sometimes a common variety of the fish was deemed to be a rarer breed and vice versa. And that's precisely how the hoodwinker had swum under the radar for so long. No one took the time to pinpoint its subtle differences. Nygaard explained, 
It had gone unnoticed because no one really realized it looked different. There's a long history of confusion about the species in the sunfish family. The fish had managed to stay out of sight and out of everybody's attention. It had been taken for Mola Mola, the ocean sunfish, so it was hoodwinking us all. So, when the California-based team found a hoodwinker on their shores, it floored Nygaard. She told The Guardian in March 2019 that she had at first felt skeptical, but the pictures confirmed that another one of her species of sunfish had surfaced, leaving her in a mix of disbelief and excitement. Much of that had to do with the hoodwinker's final resting place. Indeed, California is far from the fish's usual haunts in the Southern Hemisphere. Nygaard said, that's as far north as I've seen it. That corresponds to a cold water current. For this fish to suddenly rock up in California is really exciting. So how exactly did this specific hoodwinker end up over 4,000 miles away from its typical habitat? Well, Nygaard explained to CNN that this type of exploratory behavior wasn't completely uncharacteristic for the hoodwinker. As she put it in her own words, it's not uncommon for sunfish to wander really far. Nygaard shared another pair of hypotheses with the Guardian. She said, it could just be a lost sunfish, or it could be we don't understand the distribution yet. Then, of course, there is the whole issue around climate change. We can't conclude anything from just one specimen, but of course, it's the question. Luckily, there's something which will potentially answer Nygaard's lingering questions. DNA. After its discovery, scientists from UC Santa Barbara gathered around the beached fish to take samples of its genetic information. If a match is established between it and a New Zealand hoodwinker, then it would prove that the California one had branched off from its southern hemisphere counterparts. If this turns out to have been the case, though, there would still nonetheless be questions about the hoodwinker. As Nygaard put it to CNN, We know it has the temperate distribution around here and off the coastline of Chile, but then how did it cross the equator and turn up by you guys? It's intriguing what made this fish cross the equator. In the meantime, everyone involved with the discovery of the California hoodwinker was seemingly pleased to be a part of such a momentous find. Nielsen told The Current, Mola tecta, the hoodwinker, was just recently discovered, so there is still so much to learn about this species. I'm so glad that we could help these researchers make the final definitive ID. For fish scientist Foster, the excitement had kicked in long before the positive identification of the hoodwinker. As he explained to CNN, to discover that it may be the first record in all of the Americas and only the second Northern Hemisphere record of the species, then I got very excited. It will take some time to determine if the California hoodwinker has ties to those in the Southern Hemisphere. But in any case, a very interesting individual will carry out the DNA tests. Geneticist Dr. Met Nygaard of Denmark's Aarhus University will lead the charge. Her surname may have given away the fact that she's Nygaard's sibling. For now, scientists can laud the fact that people on the internet help them to identify an incredibly rare species. The Coal Oil Point Reserve's director, Chris Sandoval, elaborated on this idea to The Current. He said, without attentive eyes, camera phones, and social media, the Australian ichthyologist would have never learned that the fish had just been seen for the first time in the Northern Hemisphere. Sandoval also implied that this new way to share and spread scientific theory would be a thing of the future. Right now, of course, it's still a relatively new concept. He explained, this type of crowdsourced science is helping biologists map species in ways we could not have imagined just a few years ago. Nygaard and Turner celebrated social media for its aid in their triumph too. Nygaard, for one, lauded iNaturalist for its bright and helpful community. She told CNN, we're living in a changing world and it's important for scientists to get input from everybody in what they see because we can't be out in the field every day all over the world. And then there was Turner, who was quick to point out that he, a fish expert, would have missed the hoodwinker's signs without the World Wide Web. He said, I'm a professor, I'm a biologist, but I didn't actually know what was special about this fish. 
I just posted a picture and that connected me with the world's expert and the discoverer of the species.